I would now like to introduce today's presenters. Akshat is a partner and leads engineering services research and advisory at Everest Group across industry verticals. He also works with global engineering service providers on business growth strategy, competitiveness, and differentiation. Mukesh is a vice president in the information technology services team at Everest Group, leading research in the areas of enterprise digital transformation, cloud and traditional infrastructure, next generation network infrastructure, digital workplace, and cybersecurity. Titus is a practice director and leads Everest Group's cloud and infrastructure services research practice focusing on network services and 5G. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to Akshat. Thank you, uh, uh, Dear participants, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our webinar and thank you for joining in. Today, we gather here to explore the transformative potential of uh, 5G technology, specifically in the space of uh, private networks. Uh, we've created a you know very uh, simple agenda for the day. Uh, maybe we can go to the next page with the agenda. Yeah. So uh, we've created a fairly simple one for the day. We'll start by talking about the overall market landscape, essentially understanding how is the APAC market looking at the 5G space, specifically in the private 5G domain. We'll explore the rate of adoption what the ecosystem is looking like, how our enterprise is looking at private 5G, what are the challenges they're facing and so on and so forth. And then we we'll shift gears and spend some time in the, you know, what you see in the middle, which is the fundamentals of 5G, essentially our advice, our recommendations to how enterprises should explore private 5G, how should they navigate challenges and how can they look at maximizing their returns or investments as well. Towards the end of this discussion uh, today, we will uh, hopefully have some time for Q&A. I would encourage all the participants to share, you know, any questions that they might have over chat. And uh, towards the end, we will take those up. And between myself, Mukesh and Titus, who are my co-panelists today, we'll try and answer those. So let's uh, get this kick started. Uh, if we can go to the next page. Uh, so essentially, looking at the, the space of private 5G, but maybe let, let's take a step back, right? Over the past many years, I'd say the evolution of wireless networks has been you know, nothing short of remarkable from the uh, you know introduction of 3G to then the widespread adoption of 4G. Every generation has essentially brought in possibilities which otherwise did not exist. They enabled individuals and businesses to do more um, than what they previously could do. However, I would say that, you know, with the with the era of 5G, as we get into this whole era of 5G, we find ourselves at the brink of almost, which I should call as a revolution. 5G, you know, I would say represents a significant leap forward in terms of speed, in terms of capacity, in terms of connectivity, and with all of its incredible bandwidth and ultra low latency and its, its ability to support massive device connectivity. It clearly has the potential to, you know, unlock multitude of applications that were previously unconceivable. And while 5G is already making waves and strides in the public domain uh, with telecos uh, across the globe rolling out networks, uh, some will say that the true potential, true power of this technology lies in its ability to transform the private networks. Uh, in the private networks front, 5G offers a range of benefits that are it's a tailor-made for specific use cases uh, in industries like manufacturing, in, in industries like healthcare, logistics, and others. Uh, imagine, say, a factory floor where autonomous robots are working seamlessly and they are essentially using the ultra-reliable and low-latency 5G connectivity. Or think of a hospital which is leveraging uh, private networks to enhance their remote surgeries or telemedicine or, or patient monitoring. All of these are possible because of uh, private 5G essentially. And these possibilities are endless by deploying these uh, networks. I'd say, you know, while on one side, I captured some of the use cases beyond just maximizing the possibilities within the use cases, enterprises also level up on their security, on their reliability and control of 
of their network infrastructure. Well, we'll talk about a lot of this today in this call, uh, but we'll also bring in the specific context of the APAC region, uh, which has its own nuances. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about all of that today. But before we go any further, maybe let's run a small poll. Uh, we would like to keep this um, a session, which is highly engaging for all the audience as well. Um, and you know, to set this rolling, we would love to know from you uh, we would like to understand how the market today is looking at private 5G, right? So here, here's the you know question. So the poll is how important is private 5G in achieving your uh, business uh, or, or IT goals, right? We'll keep this open for uh, maybe around 30 to 40 seconds. Uh, and, and I would request all of you to choose any of these options, which you know you feel is relevant to you. Uh, we can rate it from anywhere between very important on one side of the spectrum to I don't know why I need uh, 5G in the private networks on the other side. Okay, so here's a quick result. As all of you can see, uh, as, as I had expected, some of uh, the people say that they don't know why they need 5G. Um, some believe it's very very important and majority of them uh, are somewhere in the middle maybe a little uh, little uh, beyond the middle path which is it is important but only when i can justify roi uh, and let me let me just admit right this is exactly what we hear from most of the ecosystem ecosystem participants that we speak with as well uh, on this note, let me invite Mukesh. Uh, Mukesh will, you know, try and reflect on this and also take the conversation forward, uh, bring the APAC context as well. Over to you, Mukesh. Sure. Thank you, Akshat. Uh, if you move on to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, essentially, I think, you know, with the advent of 5G, what we are talking about is that, um, you know, there have been multiple technologies, right, from starting from MPLS, and we had the entire landline connectivity, and then we moved to a lot of wireless technologies. So now somewhere, it's a mix of all of these technologies that's prevalent amongst uh, enterprises. What we're seeing is some of these technologies are gaining more traction versus some of them are declining, right? For example, uh, Wi-Fi 5 or below or private 5, private 4G, all of these are uh, seeing degrees in terms of enterprise adoption. Whereas something like Wi-Fi 6, wireless antenna or uh, private 5G, these are seeing uh, an uptick among enterprises. Um, some technologies like MPLS are seeing a decline, but then fiber-based connectivity due to the requirements of 5G are also seeing an uptick, right? So therefore there is a net increase even when we are talking about fiber-based connectivity. Right, so now private 5G kind of stands right in the middle of these technologies and uh, is in a situation where it can really transform how enterprises are adopting these technologies. And what is uh, really driving these, Why? what is really driving private 5G adoption or in terms of what are some of the benefits that enterprises are seeing is one is definitely in terms of monetizing avenues which means that these are creators create, helping enterprises create new business opportunities directly impacting their top line. Um, second is faster time to market, which means that enterprises are accelerating time to market using uh, cloud services to automate VSS and OSS. Thirdly, in terms of software-defined architecture, I think you know, few years, a few years ago, network was something that enterprises really did not want to touch a lot because it used to be very manual, very effort-intensive, and if something went wrong, it could lead to potential disaster for enterprises. However, uh, over the last few years, people have made it a lot more programmable, and private five G helps it, uh, you know, become even more software-defined, leading to greater innovation and control for enterprises. The fourth benefit uh, private 5G is providing is reduced operational expenditures, uh, which means that it is, um, you know, essentially through through virtualization and improving server utilization, overall operational expenditures are going down. And finally, providing control and security. So the ability of enterprises to control and shape data traffic to improve overall security. And in general, what we are seeing in security is becoming a top imperative of enterprises. So, um, you know, I think these are the key reasons why we are seeing uh, private 5G connectivity improving. If you move on to the next slide. 
contextualizing this to APAC in terms of how we are seeing the adoption uh, in APAC enterprise spending, we do believe is expected to grow significantly because of a uh, significant increase in demand by enterprise and also the support system, support ecosystem initiatives. Now, currently, as per, as per our estimates, the overall APAC private 5G market in terms of enterprise spending stands around 300 to 350 million US dollars. And it is uh, expected to grow at a CAGR of 40 to 45% over the next five years. And in terms of where the spending is going or coming from within enterprises, around 50% is on infrastructure and equipment. Associated services is 35% and 15% is being spent on spectrum. And if you look at the split from a services perspective, essentially CSPs are around 40% um, of, of enterprise spend. Then independent private networks, 35%, and hybrid networks, 25% of enterprise spend is going in these, right? Now, talking about, um, you know, again, from an APAC perspective, what are the drivers from a private 5G, um, private 5G lens? So we saw some of the benefits, right? Obviously, those are there. But apart from that, from an enablement perspective, why APAC enterprises are seeing a good Traction is improved enterprise connectivity, right? So again, you know, we are talking about this in terms of reducing time to market for applications and how it can lead to overall efficiency. Rising private 5G use cases, um, I think this is one market which is essentially being driven by use case identification, right? So it's not a blanket approach that is working for enterprises. So each enterprise has its own um, use case that is trying to identify Provider ecosystem investments, um, you know, if you look across telcos, system integrators, some of the network, network equipment providers, all of them have been investing not just from a technology perspective, but also in terms of consumption models, offerings, um, and an improvement in, from a value proposition for enterprises as well. And finally, increased regulatory uh, support. I think APAC has been one region, obviously, you know, within APAC, there are different countries and we'll see some of that nuancing as well in subsequent slides. But in general, what we've seen is that there is a more maturity from an overall adoption framework, market events and conducive uh, spectrum licensing. Right. So that's a brief overview. And as I mentioned, right, you know, we'll be going into specific regions and I'll ask Titus to walk you through within APAC how specific regions are behaving. Thank you, Mukesh. So I've been tracking this market for some time and I always find the APAC market to be the most fascinating amongst all, given the diverse nature of the market. When I say diverse, it's both in terms of maturity, regulatory support, and the use cases that are being adopted. We see a diverse nature in terms of that. So when I talk about examples, the way to look at APAC market, and this is specific for enterprises, service providers, telecom providers who are supporting this ecosystem is to look at, at different regions, given that each region has a different maturity. For example, if you take China, South Korea, and Japan, they are fairly advanced markets, and I would even rate them well above any of the Western countries in terms of maturity of 5G and even in terms of standalone 5G adoption. These markets stand way ahead of the Western countries, and even the some of the speeds that have been achieved in these markets are fairly high. And if you take the other end of the spectrum, there are countries in the ASEAN region which has yet to adopt someone like Indonesia has just started adopting in 2022. There are markets which are yet to even start the 5G journey. So you get a wide variety of spectrum in terms of addressing this market. And especially the ASEAN market is, is a mini APAC in itself. You have Singapore, which is very mature. You have uh, Indonesia, which is slightly behind in adoption. And you have Thailand, Malaysia, where in between the adoption journey in terms of maturity and the way to address each of them is to take an industry specific approach and if you look at some of the regions that are leading if you see someone like south korea and japan there's a lot more adoption in manufacturing and specifically in manufacturing we're looking at automotive specific use cases that are driving adoption in these regions if you look at someone like a and Z, the uniqueness of that market is we see a lot of adoption for mining, energy and utilities, and even agriculture being a big use case in terms of uh, how the market is headed towards. And if 
enterprises are looking at it they need to look at use cases for your industry and your region and the support that you are getting in terms of your region and one more market that i want to kind of highlight here is india though they were very late in terms of spectrum adoption but in terms of enterprises wanting to adopt a lot of private 5g initiatives we see a lot more uh, interest there's a lot more backing from the c suite in terms of hey i want to differentiate my offerings through private 5g and that's going to be an interesting space in going forward and right now my the growth rates might be lower the market sizes might be lower but going ahead it's going to increase in a drastic manner and in terms of uh, industries obviously manufacturing is leading the uh, spend in terms of where they are adopting uh, and the, some of the use cases are split across both automotive as well as some of the process engineering both in terms of automated guided vehicles you have seen a lot of use cases coming up healthcare is another interesting market just which is still in a very nascent stage and it has the potential to even move ahead of manufacturing in terms of spend and especially with remote healthcare coming up and we are seeing a lot of use cases coming in the south korea and anz markets already in terms of some of these use cases being implemented and when we are talking in the second half we'll talk about some of these use cases as well moving on to the next slide and now that we talked about some of the industries and the regions i also want to talk about the ecosystem and that's kind of important to talk about given that earlier network was standalone people there were dedicated providers who were working on network technology standalone but what has changed right now is there's a convergence in terms of the ecosystem and there's a convergence between it ot as well and there's a convergence between network it and ot as well and that's going to be an important factor going forward and i want to quickly talk about some of the important ecosystem providers in the space and the first and obvious ones being being the network equipment providers these are the ones who provide you with your ran equipment some of your 5g devices all of them and what we are seeing uh, in terms of how they are going to go forward is we are going to see adoptions uh, offerings in like private 5g in a box where instead of you installing big or ma many small cell equipments there's going to be a box type of offerings Uh, that are going to come up so that the enterprises can easily adopt private 5g without having to invest a lot in them in terms of both capex investment as well as some of the time investments but with time the role of equipment providers will decline as as and when enterprises mature in their adoption the csps or what we call them the telcos have a critical role to play with their expertise in providing network and 5g for many many years and what they are trying to do right now is they are trying to provide multiple options in terms of how they can adopt 5g instead of enterprises spending a lot on spectrum themselves they are getting options like network slicing of public networks network slicing of private networks from telcos and what we are also seeing telcos increasingly do is in terms of bringing the entire ecosystem together they are working with the likes of network equipment providers they are working with the likes of hyperscalers and they want to bring together a single offering that can be directly implemented for a particular use case then we have another critical role which is the service providers or what we also call them as system integrators they are going to be key in terms of bringing the other it stacks together in terms of the private 5g and the use cases if i have to draw a comparison in with cloud am i audible now sorry i got muted for a minute so in terms of they are also looking at the system integrator is going to bring cloud applications different iot technologies different edge technologies together given they worked on the enterprise environment for many many years they understand the industry and the use case better than anybody else and they're going to play a key role going forward and right now they might be 
behind in terms of the amount of spending that the enterprises spend with them. But going forward, they're going to play a crucial role in terms of enabling those use cases, working along with the telcos, equipment providers, and the hyperscalers. And hyperscalers are a very interesting play here, given they've been working with the tele telecom providers in terms of enabling 5G for the public networks. And now they've shifted their focus in terms of monetizing 5G for different enterprises as well. And we've seen the likes of Azure work with some of the APAC telecom providers like Singtel, uh, we are seeing likes of Airtel working directly with AWS in terms of enabling specific use cases and what the hyperscalers bring to the table is in terms of core infrastructure, be it RAN, as well as in terms of compute, storage, as well as some of the data analytics capabilities as well. And that's going to be an interesting play going forward because any of the use cases that we are looking at that try, private 5G is going to enable the core IT infrastructure has a critical role to play in it and cloud is the only solution. And from a cloud to an edge point of view as well, we are seeing a lot of offerings coming up uh, in terms of what the hyperscalers and their role is gonna increase going forward in the next one to two years. And lastly, we have the or technology providers who kind of provide software and solutions both in terms of enabling private 5G, enabling IoT, IIoT use cases in terms of both deployment management, especially security is a key role to play. And uh, we also have some of the specialist providers who are working on industry specific use cases as well. So this is the kind of ecosystem that we are looking at. And in terms of right now, the adoption may be at the starting point and still, there's not a dominant partner that the enterprises can look towards, but in the next one to two years, the entire ecosystem is going to converge and we're going to have a single point of contact that the enterprises can work with. And the APAC enterprises have already started doing that in certain pockets. With that, I want to pass it on to Akshit for the next poll. Thank you, Titus. So uh, folks, so far we've discussed a lot of aspects around uh, the overall market. Why is this technology important? Why are people looking at it? We also gauged uh, people's interest, but here's the second part. If you actually think of adopting, what are the challenges that you face? So that's our next poll in your opinion, which is the biggest challenge to enterprise adoption of private 5G. Again, this is gonna be open for another few seconds. These range from cost to you know limited benefits to tech complexity uh, and so on. So we'll keep it open for another few seconds and let's see what the attendees have to say on this particular one. Okay, the results are out. I'm actually not sure if these results are visible to most. So I let me read those out. So the 50% of the participants have selected limited realizable benefits as the um, as the option of their choice. Again, fairly expected. And the next two on the list are suboptimal private 5G offerings and related services, and then the high option cost. Again, you know, uh, we can maybe move on to the next uh, page. Thanks, by the way, everyone, for sharing your thoughts. We've heard most of these before. Um, many people in the ecosystem that we speak with, they talk about all of these, these issues. And we've actually tried to capture some of those on this page here. Uh, they are in uh, sort of an order based on how often do we hear about these, right? So the first one is around articulating and formulating 5G monetization strategy. That's a big issue. Many uh, private 5G use cases, they are they are in their nascent stages and they leverage next-gen technologies as well. And hence, if you want to build a monetization strategy around it, it becomes somewhat challenging, especially if you are looking at near-term outcomes. In fact, you know, ideally, enterprises should not be thinking about just the immediate direct benefits, but they actually do have to keep in mind the second order or the third order benefits as well. Uh, in order to fully understand, uh, you know, what kind of a monetization strategy do they need to put in in place? In a way, you have to have a long-term vision 
if you are thinking of private 5G. Second, and quite in sync with what was highlighted as well, uh, the upfront cost, it could be in terms of design, it could be in terms of implementation. This is fairly steep, right? And there is no two ways about it. This, this cost can, can be significant, especially when you put in perspective that many of the use cases that we are talking about, they are currently being addressed in some form or the other, maybe suboptimally, but they are still being addressed. And then add to the fact that uh, if you're talking about the APAC enterprises, uh, they don't want to commit to the spend, uh, uh, you know, and that that tendency is even higher than their counterparts in North America or Europe. Their their IT spends tend, uh, you know, tend to be lesser compared to their counterparts in other geographies. That's a big issue. Third one is around the high technological complexity. So uh, there is a there is a fair degree of complexity in this technology. Again, this is also highlighted in 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 the poll that we just ran. Many uh, enterprises and the you know uh, keepers of networks, let me just call them, right? They don't want to disturb what is already functioning, right? It's the it's the attitude of let's not fix what is you know not broken kind of kind of an approach that doesn't serve very well because you know there is a decent amount of furniture moment which is required here, uh, and well, sure, it is definitely complex uh, for any enterprise to go down this path. The next one is around aligning enabling investments in supplementary technology. So here's another issue. A lot of what you want to achieve with private 5G cannot be achieved in a standalone manner. You need enabling technologies, other technologies, which could be in the form of cloud or edge computing or data and AI. Each one of them brings in their own complexities. Many of them would look very similar to what you see on the screen. But in a way, all of these are you know additional investments that we are asking enterprises to go down uh, the path of uh, in order to realize private 5G. So in, in that sense, it becomes yet another deterrent for, for enterprises. The next thing that we hear very often is lack of mature solutions and offerings. Essentially, um, if you look at private 5G and if as an enterprise, you look outwards towards uh, the ecosystem, you, would, you, you, you can get a feeling that the market is yet not mature. There is a lot which is out there which is changing evolving at a dynamic pace hence many companies choose to sit back and let things evolve more before they you know go ahead and make an investment one way or the other the last couple are, are also fairly important though you know we don't hear them as often but some enterprises have highlighted the fact that the clear regulatory guidelines on private 5g are not very you know visible or they are evolving they don't they don't really offer the the specific clarity which an enterprise would require before they make this significant investment. Uh, and lastly, network integration and performance concerns. Uh, a lot of what you would uh, you know, uh, interfere with um, from, a, from a private 5G adoption standpoint, it relates to existing infra. Um, and then you, know, you, you, would, you would be very careful before you touch any of it. Uh, in terms of what it will do to performance and other use cases, etc., and even on security front. So all these challenges, if you if you look at, at them as a whole, right, those are fairly significant ones. And enterprises often hesitate before they put significant efforts, uh, you know, towards uh, uh, adopting private five G. But anyways, you know, this is one one side of the coin. The other side is enterprises are still very interested, and in. we spoke about all the benefits and. Why is it that it is it is important? Why, at the end of the day, a lot of investment is already happening. Um, to explore more in terms of how should enterprises approach uh, private five G, specifically in context of these challenges, I'm going to invite Mukesh again. Mukesh, yeah, thanks, Akshat. Uh, if you move on to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, in this section, essentially, we'll be talking about two key things. One is five fundamentals of 5G in terms of uh, how enterprises should go about adopting these. And then we'll be talking about key takeaways uh, for the ecosystem in terms of, you know, what enterprise should be doing, what equipment providers, CSP, and what system integrators should be doing uh, based on the, you know, based on what we are discussing today. So moving on. The next slide, yeah. So, uh, so 
Essentially, in terms of um, the strategy building for an enterprise, right? what we are saying is that there are five key things that an enterprise needs to consider to navigate the challenges that Akshit was talking about and also to maximize the ROI of their investments. And we saw that in you know, ma maximizing ROI is potentially one of the main reasons where um, enterprises are confused about their 5G adoption. So we are saying that there are five key things that you know one needs to consider in their strategy. First one is relevant use cases. And we talked a bit about this, that the entire 5G adoption is based not on a blanket approach, but more from a use case perspective. And thus it was by verticals, by different um, enterprises within verticals, and therefore, you need to select, pick the right use cases. You might also need to prioritize, right? Because if for, for your enterprise, there might be 15, 20, or even more use cases, but you might want to start with just five, right? So you prioritize and build a business case in line with that. Second is selecting the right infrastructure. Uh, so again, in terms of the overall network infrastructure deployment type and consumption type, there are multiple options available uh, you know, across the ecosystem. We saw some of it in the earlier slides in terms of how equipment providers are not focusing just from a you know, technology perspective, but also in terms of consumption model deployment type and so on. So you need to select the right mix of infrastructure which is suitable for your environment. The third is selecting uh, the, the robust partnership, right? So again, you know, the ecosystem is vast and you need a combination of different type of players coming in to ensure smooth private 5G adoption and also to ensure that you are able to realize ROI from it. Then uh, again, very important point is measuring the results, right? Now, in, in fact, what you observed is in some of these areas where you are implementing a newer technology, if you do not have a robust means of measuring you know, your progress, right? In terms of, you know, what your goals were and, you know, are you moving in line with that? Essentially, you might falter and then you will say that you are not realizing the expected ROI from these investments. Then it's, it's important to identify the relevant uh, KPIs and also the OKRs, which is not mentioned here, but, you know, in terms of what's your objectives and key results, I effectively monitor and track them and also incorporate the learnings on a regular basis. And finally, um, in terms of related resources, right? So, you know, apart from just from a technology perspective and focusing on private 5G, right, there is the entire ecosystem of what's happening beyond 5G, which is in terms of, say, people, existing processes, ages and technologies in the overall IT style. All of these also need to be considered when uh, devising a strategy for private 5G. We'll go into details of all of these, right? We'll invite uh, Titus to talk more about uh, these as we go forward. Thank you, Mukesh. So first, as we've continuously highlighted throughout is around identifying your right use case. And at every group, we have our own approach in terms of how do we identify it for our clients in the first and the most key important aspect is to take two lenses. One is your internal business landscape and the second being your external operating environment. And it's critical that enterprises take these two lenses in terms of identifying them. And we'll also talk about how to prioritize them. What are some of the key aspects to look at? And I'll also talk about some of the case studies that we have been part of uh, in terms of some of the implementations that we've seen. What we typically see from enterprise and what they don't kind of identify at a very early level is, is some of their taking their entire journey, both in terms of network, as well as in terms of business use case, what are the key priorities going forward from business? At least in when I take a comparison with cloud, the realization for cloud being a vertical specific approach or need to take a vertical specific approach came at a later standpoint. And given we are still at a very nascent stage, it's critical that enterprises take and identify what is your next big bet in terms of your businesses. And from there is how you start, start to identify, hey, this is my biggest problem and now how can private 5G in terms of, along with some of my other technologies can enable that. Also, what enterprises need to take into consideration, not just, we see enterprises take into CAPEX considerations, but they don't take care of process bottleneck, some of the legacy technology that's not going to help in terms of you moving to a private 5G-led digital transformation. So 
enterprises need to take all of that into picture. And the last or the more important thing that enterprises need to take a lens is not only at an enterprise level, but at a business function level, how you can transform your digital operations is something that enterprises need to consider. From an external operating environment, and I think fairly most enterprises understand the maturity of the ecosystem is fairly new and they kind of take into consideration of that. But what they leave out is to consider what your industry is up to in terms of uh, maturity or adoption of private 5G. So a lot of manufacturing enterprises need private 5G to kind of become the next gen manufacturing because we are now in the industry 4.0 era and private 5G is critical to enabling a lot of your use case in terms of reducing cost of your operations. And, but a lot of enterprises given they are not understanding the maturity of the provider ecosystem, they kind of tend to not delve into the, even some of the uh, POCs as well, which is a flaw. Now, moving on to the next slide, we kind of want to talk about, given that you've considered your internal and external landscape, how do you prioritize use cases? So uh, moving on to the next slide. There are three main considerations that enterprises need to take. The first being the business impact and that needs to directly tie to your top line or bottom line in terms of both in terms of direct revenue or cost savings. And second factor being your time to value. And this is one of the key parameters that we see that enterprises don't consider and later tend to kind of uh, take a sense check after a year of POCs, A, I'm not seeing my values coming out in the first year itself. And so that becomes a critical parameter in terms of your journey in terms of, hey, I'm going to start adopting now. And in only after 25 months, I can meaningfully realize value. And that kind of prioritization is required. And the third is, do you really need private 5G for the identified use case? And that is also key in terms of how you're going to take your digital transformation forward because a lot of times what we kind of end up seeing is seeing other enterprises do private 5G adoption. Some of the enterprises rush into adopting private 5G, but that need no, that shouldn't be the case. They need to really understand whether private 5G is required or not. And at Everest Group, we follow a two by two framework with business impact and time to value as two axes with private 5G dependencies. Enterprises can use a similar framework to identify some of these use cases within your industry, within your business functions, or you can also work with external advisors like Epsis Group to kind of work with identifying your right use cases that are gonna bring you the maximum business impact, the faster time to value at, at the same time. Now, moving on to the second parameter, which is around the, after you identify use cases, it's also critical that you identify the right infrastructure. Moving on to the next slide. In terms of uh, what we recommend is what we call our 5C framework for identifying the right infrastructure. And it has key tenants like connectivity, whether you want to take an independent private 5G network, do you want to take a CSP led private 5G network, or is going to be a combination of both, or are you going to take it as a service? So there are multiple deployment options. There are multiple uh, pricing models that are also applicable in terms of, and multiple factors need to be considered. And I want to talk about an example here, one of the leading, manufacturing companies in Japan, what they ended up doing is first they identified their use cases and they ended up prioritizing just two of them. One being they wanted to use automated guided vehicles for factory floor op operations. And the second is they wanted to implement a robust security system using AI enabled cameras that are deployed through private 5G. And what they ended up realizing is they needed lower latency and more control given the security of the entire premise was at uh, picture. And we are also looking at 
the entire factory floor operations using AGVs are going to be key important factors. So they decided on an independent private 5G network. They brought that spectrum from the government and they ended up deploying that. But at the other end of the spectrum, we also have some enterprises or manufacturing enterprises in India. They ended up going with a CSP led private 5G offering for their digital twins as the use case. So uh, multiple options are there, but what enterprises need to consider is both in terms of cost, both in terms of capability and control, what can bring you the best benefit for your digital transformation. And that needs to consider your IT and OT environment as well, as well as whether you get the flexibility in terms of pricing models. And increasingly what we are seeing as well is in terms of newer pricing models coming up uh, for adoption. And most telecom operators are starting to realize that uh, how how can we provide outcome based models and that is something enterprises need to keep in mind now i'd like to hand over to mukesh in terms of talking about some of the other factors as well yeah and uh, before we do that right maybe we'll again do a quick poll so titus talked about some of the use cases so in your opinion uh, which of this these groups present the most significant opportunity for private 5g uh, private 5g I'll just read out the options, enabling AI and Gen AI use cases, edge use cases, IoT and industry 4.0 use cases, mission critical application uh, or industry specific business use cases. So we'll wait for the results uh, and it will be interesting to see how uh, this shapes up. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I think again ties back to some of what Titus has already talked about, right? So IoT and Industry 4.0 use cases and mission critical application use cases take the major share of the pie, right? So um, we'll move on. We'll move on, uh, you know, and go back to slide 18 where, yeah, so when we talked about uh, relevant use cases and right infrastructure, right? So next we'll be talking about robust partnership on the next slide. Yeah, so uh, from here yeah, in terms of, and again, we talked briefly about this, that enterprises need to engage with the right ecosystem of partners to ensure that they are able to realize the maximum ROI from their investments. And uh, what we are you know, witnessing is that from a survey, we are saying that 60 to 65 percent of APAC enterprises outsourcing spend on private 5G is dedicated to initial value chain elements such as conception, consulting, design, and implementation. Right now, um, you know, if you were to look at what are the key components or which are the key partners that their typical enterprises, say someone like an ABP or a GM has when they are implementing uh, private 5G, one is the communication service providers, likes of the Telstra or Geo who are providing connectivity service enablement and also provide one-stop uh, solutions. And then we have the network equipment providers or the NEPs which provide the network technology equipment. So we have Ericsson, likes of Ericsson and Nokia in this category. Then we have the device and SOC vendors where uh, who are partners for reliable and low-cost IoT devices. Um, then application creators, again, you know, this is where it more becomes starts to become more business centric. So someone like a Red Hat or, um, you know, Metaswitch are providers who are relevant over here. Then we talk about hyperscale and edge providers. Again, I think these are the ones who are providing the underlying infrastructure, which Titus briefly discussed upon. So AWS, Azure, uh, GCP, right, again, you know, all of them and also the telco providers from an edge standpoint. And then finally, system integrators. I think system integrators can come in and provide that additional business layer on top of the entire infrastructure pass layer that we have been talking about, right? So these are partners for 5G as a service and uh, they also offer managed private 5G offerings along with integration and testing services. So typically in the current environment also, we given that there are a lot of constraints around challenge, uh, around talent and so on. So. We, we do see system integrators bringing in a lot of value from a technology and also talent perspective. 
Now, how to assess whether you are entering into a strong uh, and a robust private 5G partnership or not? So we have laid out certain characteristics of a, uh, of a strategic private 5G partnership. One is, um, you know, entering into a partnership with players who are strategically aligned with your vision. Second is looking for integrated value-based messaging, right? Whether someone is capturing the end-to-end -end, uh, you know, life cycle or not. Third is adoption of open architecture. Then we are talking about regional capabilities and understanding, especially in a market like APAC, which is so diverse. Um, then leveraging uh, partners, platforms, frameworks, and accelerators. So, um, you know, again, I think private 5G is one area where things are evolving very quickly, right? So it's important that you are able to leverage some of these starting points which your partners have already built. And finally, using testing and innovation labs and hubs, right? So I think these are the strategic tenets of a robust partnership. On the next slide, we'll talk about related resources and enablers, right? So, um, you know, apart from what we've talked about so far so in terms of identifying the relevant use cases, having the right infra and robust partnership, there are also a lot of other things which, which are more adjacent in terms of the discussion we are having, but are equally important in the overall strategy. One is uh, the first, basically the four things we are talking about here is people, process, complementary enablers, which are, you know, um, you know, topics around network, technologies around network, and then supplementary technologies, which are technologies from the broader IT stack, not just network that will enable private 5G. Um, so from people perspective, right, you know, again, education, bring, building up the talent uh, and change management, these are critical areas to invest in. From a process perspective, um, you know, effective integration, leveraging automation, digitizing the business processes, and focusing on process innovation. Complementary enablers, these are network technologies apart from private 5G, which implemented will enhance the overall adoption um, and ROI generation for you. So something like a software-defined network and NFV, you talked about these open RAN and open source technologies. MEC and uh, network cloudification, right? So these are uh, complementary enablers for private 5G. And then from the broader IT stack perspective, supplementary technologies are likes of data analytics and AI uh, advanced networking technologies such as Wi-Fi 6, IoT and Edge and SASE and Zero Trust. Um, you know, for something like an AI, we are seeing a lot of exploratory use cases with something like Gen AI coming in. Um, you know, we are we are witnessing areas of improvement or optimization in the overall network, right? All of it is still in early stages, but uh, really exciting in terms of how this is panning out. So we talk, briefly talked about regular results, measurement of those results. I'll invite Akshat to talk about these in detail and also followed by the key takeaways from our discussion so far. Akshat, over yep, to you. Thanks. Thanks, Mukesh. So um, let's talk about uh, the returns bit, right? And if uh, if you can move on to the next page, that'd be great. So uh, this is this is very interesting. ROI is uh, the most important bit at the end of the because this is where I think all the rest of the talk on talent, on technology, use cases, benefits, ecosystem, uh, related resources and labor, all of this boils down to uh, the return on investment and in context with private 5g i must admit this is not a simple conversation uh, i can share a few things that that are good to know here i think first one is return on investment in case of private 5g it is of multiple types some of these are fairly operational measurable objective quantifiable and, and you can see those on the screen as well so things around cost reduction in internal rate of failure or reduced service disruption or quality of service or you know reduced potential of data breaches all of these are fairly quantifiable there are kpis that you can you can track there right at the same time if as an enterprise you are choosing to uh, invest in private 5g you you have to also appreciate the next order uh, relatively more uh, qualitative um, you know, benefits that you achieve out of it. These can be around the experience of the employees. These can be around extensibility. And these will also be, you know, uh, while they might be measurable, but these are still the next order, which, which are distinctly around what benefits you are achieving on the specific use cases that you are really investing into. So if you are thinking of ROI, you could think holistically across 
multitudes of these dimensions. The next thing is uh, how do you measure, right? Um, so I think the good news is that these there are there are a variety of tools which exist. The third party ecosystem, hyperscalers, many of those do offer these these tools. We have mentioned some of those, you know, in the in the bottom towards the left. And then at the same time, there are a lot of uh, very specific KPIs, like I mentioned, at least around the uh, quantifiable objective weights that you can measure. These are things like cost per cell site, packet loss rate, signal to noise ratio, uh, et cetera, which are very operational. And there could also be other business KPIs that, that you could also go to. The last thing that I'd mention here is that while, of course, you can venture into measuring the ROI, say, a few days down the line after having invested in letting your private 5G networks run, but while that is okay, this is also not an activity that, that you want to do in just one go and be done with it. In a way, what we're saying is that uh, measuring uh, the ROI return on investment on private 5G, the uh, it has to be a phenomena where you regularly track results which is in a way, you know, what we wanted to communicate through the slide. Look, there is a fairly good degree of capital expenditure that you are making as far as uh, private 5G is concerned. But many of these investments in, let's say, other technologies or operational costs, they, they are spread over a period of time. So in a way, it is also a caution that, you know, when you are measuring ROI, when you are doing uh, this measurement, make it over a period of time. Uh, in the middle of the slide, you also see, you know, a, 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 a row of sorts where we have captured, in a way, what we recommend as a way to to do this. So identify and, uh, you know, identify the right KPIs and metrics that you would like to measure. Uh, use a total cost of ownership lens, not just look at, you know, the the capital expend uh, expenditure going in. Do continuous monitoring, leverage tools and solutions. Uh, capture the return from a quantifiable uh, and holistic perspective. And lastly, very importantly, whatever you're learning through this process, make sure that you are incorporating these learnings, putting those, uh, putting that feedback, you know, into the system once again and and improving it. So, so that's that's you know what we would say from a uh, return on investment measurement or regular uh, results capture stuff. Okay. So that's largely it. Uh, maybe we'll take a minute or two more to kind of capture the key takeaways that we had from this. If we can go to the next page. I think the, the first one is that, look, the APAC market, APAC 5G market is going at a fairly, you know, healthy pace. There's a good degree of penetration, even, you know, uh, looking at it comparatively uh, against the other geographies. Unlike many other technologies, uh, private 5G seems to be picking up well. But at the same time, while the outlook is positive, the challenges also do exist. And we spoke about a bunch of those around technology complexity, around cost, and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, so enterprises do need to be very watchful of some of them and, and devise uh, a very strategic, uh, you know, uh, kind of roadmap as to how they do it. So the key takeaway from for them is to identify the right use cases, uh, leverage the ecosystem, the power of the ecosystem for or from a technology uh, and talent standpoint. Uh, make sure that you envision all the investments into related technologies and enablers, um, and then also measure returns on a on an ongoing basis. The next bit is for telcos. Uh, telcos have a huge role to play here, but I think what we would recommend is that they should look beyond their their role of just being connectivity providers. And they could actually venture into providing a lot of other, you know, higher value uh, elements um, from from the standpoint of private five G value value chain. Um, and of course, you know that means that there will be a lot of monetization opportunities as well, which come there. Well. The third uh, block of takeaways is for the service providers, the system integrators. Um, they have a very interesting role to play here, right? Uh, like we mentioned on all the challenges around complexity around uh networks so they they are the ones who bring in a lot of understanding a lot of uh, technology know-how a lot of domain as well um, as well as the fact that you know all this next gen stuff they have the capabilities to bring in so their role is going to be very critical they are advised to invest they are advised to bring all this power of you know, technology, talent, as well as orchestrating the rest of the ecosystem to the enterprise advantage. So, so that's pretty much it, folks. I think that's uh, 
those are some those are some of the things that we wanted to share today from a private 5g standpoint in the apac market that brings us to the end of what we wanted to discuss um, and we would like to spend a few minutes on the q and we received a bunch of questions i don't think we'll have time to do all of them but we will try and address some of those but before we get to those specific questions i'm going to invite titus very quickly to talk about what we have on the next page titus sure uh so quickly wanted to discuss for all the participants you have a complimentary option of having a 30 minute discussion with us and if you're an enterprise if you want to talk about your private 5g adoption strategy you can set up a 30 minute discussion to discuss some of the challenges that you're facing and how do you go about it if you are a telco how do you want to monetize your private 5g investments we have a plethora of ways to help CSPs monetize your 5G investment so we can have a discussion on that. And if you are a system integrator or service provider, how do you build an integrated private 5G value proposition? So these are complementary offerings that you can take up and you will receive a mail post the session as an attendee and you can take up any of these complementary sessions and one of our experts will get in touch with you and address some of your queries on a one-to-one -one call. And uh, with that, I'll quickly take up some of the questions that we have gotten on the chat window. Oh, uh, this this one question from Rahul around there is ambiguity in ownership of who's going to lead the private 5G investment or the deployment private private 5G, and the answer is yes. We do see that in terms of who wants to take ownership if you talk to the equipment providers they're like please take talk to the telcos first and if you go to telcos they're like i think i need to talk to your system integrator as well but right now what we are also seeing is with 5g getting more mature the telcos are starting to lead uh, the adoption in terms of private networks and they're more uh, taking the initiative into their own hands in terms of helping some of the enterprises uh, move towards a private 5G network. So in our point of view, CSPs are going to lead initiative, but the ecosystem has a key role to play. So we will have hyperscalers, system integrators as, a, as well playing a key role. That doesn't mean others are not leading efforts, but especially in APAC, what we're seeing is in Singapore, in South Korea, in China, it's been the telcos that have been leading the efforts in terms of some of these deployments. Okay, uh, I'll take another one. Uh, this is Manish Bhadavaj. The question is uh, to me, would it be possible to share further details on high tech complexity and lack of mature solutions offering? Uh, I can speak to it, and I think uh, Mukesh also wants to answer. So, Mukesh, feel free to add. Okay. So, um, on the high tech complexity, I think uh, this is on a lot of levels, but essentially, five the private five G implementation this requires investments not only on the network side, but this is also on the broader infra, which can which can do with you know cloud and edge, and then also data and AI. Uh, which makes it fairly complicated. Uh, networks are any which way is inherently considered fairly complex by most enterprises. And once they function, they don't want to touch it as long as, as you know, it is largely glitch free. There's also an added element of complexity, which is around devices. So, you know, all this, these devices, they need deep integration with the existing uh, ecosystem. So, so that's also the other one. The other question which I see is around lack of mature solutions. Uh, and as perhaps the question is which mature, which solutions are we talking about here, which are not as mature. So some which come to mind are, uh, for example, private 5G managed services or private 5G as a service. These are uh, you know still in infancy uh, when you compare to hyperscalers or sub provider offerings available in other genes. Hopefully this answers. Okay, um, I think that brings us to the end of this session today. Uh, hopefully this was useful. Thank you everybody for taking the time out. Uh, I on behalf of Titus and Mukesh would like to thank all of you and uh, 
uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll connect again and stay engaged. Thank you so much and have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Everyone, bye-bye.